We're following a major developing story out of Boeing, the company naming a new head of its commercial airplanes division. Let's get to Phil LeBeau with all the details. Phil. Melissa, we've said for some time that pressure has been building on Boeing's leadership as well as the Boeing board of directors to hold somebody accountable, to show that it's taking actions in terms of making changes that will send a message that the company is determined to get the 737 MAX resolved and back on track. Well, Kevin McAllister, who has run the Boeing commercial airplane division since late in 2016, he's out effective immediately. He's being replaced by Stan Deal. Stan Deal is a 33 year veteran of Boeing uh, with a number of positions within the commercial airplane division, most notably on the sales end of that division, particularly over in Asia and in China. If you take a look at shares of Boeing, keep in mind that this is a company that not only is wrestling with A, getting this plane recertified back in service, but also convincing its customers that it can ramp up production when it does return to service and start delivering the MAX at a faster rate next year. That's going to be the challenge for Stan Deal. Don't forget, tomorrow morning before the bell, we'll get Boeing's Q3 numbers. The numbers are not going to be as much of the focus for investors as will the comments of CEO Dennis Mullenberg. When he's talking with analysts, this will be the first time we've had a chance to hear from him since he was removed as chairman of the company and also since the documents that came out last Friday, which had a lot of people in Washington, D.C. asking, What's exactly, what exactly is going on with this company? How forthright has it been in sharing information? We've talked about that extensively over the last couple of days, Melissa, but you can bet those questions will be coming up tomorrow morning. All right, Phil, thank you. Phil LeBeau in you Chicago bet. for us. Guy, on our conference call today, you brought up Boeing as something to watch. Is it because of the good price action that we saw? It was a decent price action today. I mean, maybe it's just people clearing up short positions ahead of it. We're going to know a lot more in about 14 hours, 15 hours from now. But I'll say it again. I don't see... You have no edge going into earnings tomorrow, in my opinion. I mean, we, we can make an argument about free cash flow, valuation, the fact that maybe January regulators in Europe are going to let the 737 Maxis fly again, all those things. Wait and hear what they have to say tomorrow before you pull the trigger. Again, I understand the valuation argument. It's compelling, but I think there's too much headline risk out there. I would continue to wait. I agree on the headline risk, but yesterday we learned that the dividend is staying where it's, where it's at. Maybe that alleviates some of the cash flow worries or problems that have entered the scene as possible headwinds. And it gets back to what I've been thinking and feeling. This stock, if it was any other stock, should be down a lot more than it is. And it gets back to that name, that, that word, duopoly. So there's a certain innate value in this. Granted, the headline risk is atrocious. This is a terrible situation on any level. But the levels that the stock has been able to hold have been impressive to me. You were making the point just yesterday, this were any other company that had a product out there that killed mm -hmm. hundreds of people, yeah. the stock wouldn't be up where it is. So, so it's, then that's the point Steve's making right here, yeah. and, and I agree with that. One, one thing that's really interesting is that, you know, CEOs who say the buck stops with them, it's interesting that we see the shuffling of some of the deck chairs here. Um, you know, thinking back to Wells Fargo, Mel, and you brought Wells Fargo up as a crisis management situation a few years back. The day, we were on set the day that CEO John Stumpf Resigned, yeah. or, or uh, you know, and then they brought in Tim one of his Sloan. lieutenants, Tim right. Sloan, and we all looked at each other and said, like, "He's not long not for the world," yeah. because <laughs> because you can't fix a cultural problem with people who are multi-decade people who've been part Within of that culture. culture. Yeah. So I think what this is exactly what Boeing did, and I suspect that Monberg is going to be gone. I mean, he just he's going to have to be because if anything comes out more about what they do and when they knew it, the buck has to stop with okay, the CEO. Okay, so quick question: mm -hmm. Mullenberg is out. What does the stock do? Up, down? I guess. Wait, is, is Donahoe going to go there? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, you know, I Kevin Plank. Yeah. No, no, I, I don't know. That's a good question because I think, uh, I mean, up until very recently, I think his, his tenure there had been secure. Right. Right? So I don't know. I guess it depends on who they get. But I think more than, more than who's in the CEO chair, it's when do they get that plane flying.